Yeah. I was just going to say thank you, Dolores, because I think that's your book. And also learning that uh, soul, because that is one of the few, you know, as well as learning the words, it's important to learn these songs as well. And so the others that are um, participating in these classes should also have the opportunity to know the songs and also learn them if they want to do that. And um, the uh, lullabies, well, we just don't hear them anymore. And it's, uh, it's too bad because I used to hear our grandmothers sing those songs. And of course, we learn to sing to our brothers and sisters, but I don't think people do that much anymore. <clears throat> I think the idea of that little message in that little box is something that could be, it's like a, it's just a little story. And people do what they can, give their best of what they have. And so that's sort of a little story within the song. And other than that, um, I'm not going to make any other comments because I think the get, uh, as Doris mentioned, the giveaway is sort of a <clears throat> people have different ways of honoring. And so they do their ways, have their ways, and times have changed. But yet that same idea and that same perspective of all of me is there. And I respect that. And that's about it. Ubaho. Oh, uh, Miss Marion. Um, I guess uh, if we wanted to listen to some of those lullabies sometime in one of our sessions, we can. I have a, uh, I can have all you know the different recordings and stuff lined up, but uh, we would just have to decide, you know, and then let people know that we wanted to spend some time listening to some lullabies. So just putting that out there for us to think about if, uh, if that's something we want to do some, one of these Wednesdays. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's see who we got here. Um, I saw a couple other people join us. Um, I see Judy and uh, uh, Michael. Thank you. Look in the chat. Yes, that's my brother, Michael Tonkame. Oh, my, awesome. my little brother, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know his well, audio um, is connecting, so I let him know. Well, hopefully he can hear us. He says yes. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, awesome. Um, well, let's see here. who we have uh so for our mentors we have grandma d and miss marion and then for our learners we have uh kathy judy um, michael and myself and aunt carolyn i think <laughs> um 
like so. Let's see. All right, I guess we could uh, go ahead and get started. Who's the phone number? Sonia Haiga. Hot Dadel. Uh, who's the phone? Who has the phone number four six nine six oh. one eight? Yeah, That's for me, Michael Tonkame, Icon. Oh. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad you got your audio worked out. And then somebody's connecting the audio. Is that Michael? Did you sign out, Mike, or get out and come back in? Oh. Okay. All right. Nice. Glad that worked. Um, okay. Let's see here. I shared with him the uh, learnkiowa.org and tried to get him. I don't know if he got the lessons out the, if we were going to do anything on the lessons I think he said he's driving right now so oh, I'm driving too we just entered Texas <laughs> Dang, we're just some driving people. I'll be driving tomorrow to Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. We're all hope going. Driving they all said, over. Hope going. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Can't sit still. <laughs> I think you must be coyotes. Oh, oh go. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say all uh, uh, always always leaving, always going around? Hokum. Okay, I was okay. That's the other word for coyote. Well, let's see. Um, to get us uh, started, um, this evening, uh, Miss Marion, would you be able to say our opening? Um, they don't say. Ah, hey, go. Ah, who they? Dog e. Hey, yo, that dog e. Him dog. Ma, who they? Ain't so it's hard, you know. Go ahead, go on, go on, take go pay the Ain't a key. Go ahead, son, go ahead, don't get eight more. Go ahead, don't get go. Go ahead, hold on. Get pick it up. Not I get so bad, more hey. They, they go, go. That's how good they. Got tongo, they go on a time a good, but not a time a good chan ma. Go a hey, they do. Ain't on the key. So what? Hey, they get. So what? Hey, they get. 
ตอไซเปลุกไม่ได้ของเด็กตาเนี่ยสลอดเดี๋ยวเด็กตาเด็กตาเดี๋ยวตีตอตอไซเปลุกไม่ได้เปลุกอันนี้ตอไซตอเห
Oh. Hey, go. Melanie, are you back? Oh, I'm <laughs> I made it back. I think we have uh, She's driving through Texas right now, so Take it's in and out. She was it. We didn't know she seemed it. See, I wanted to see if uh, anyone had a specific topic or, or thing that they would like to focus on today. Focus on. Oh. Well, why am I? Sorry. He might be. Ramon, are you traveling too? <laughs> Um, I'm actually, uh, sitting here eating alongside, uh, some good friends, uh, oh. Kenny, uh, Dr. Bill Meadows and, uh, and my team as well. So we're all listening in right now. Can you hear us breathing while waiting for Melody? <laughs> <laughs> She's somewhere in Texas, so... <laughs> Periodically, we see her. <laughs> so maybe you can identify us by our breathing. <laughs> oh.
Let's see. This is Melody. I think I have my signal back. Um, I didn't hear anyone suggest make any suggestions yet. If someone did, I missed it. So sorry. Oh, it's all good. If you're just joining, uh, we just got started um, about 20 minutes ago or so. And uh, just, uh, yeah, see, I'm driving, so I can't share my screen. And I'm on my phone, not my computer. And so if anyone wants to share their screen, you can. Feel free if you want to pull something up for us to look at. But um, otherwise, it's kind of an open open forum for whichever, if anyone has any questions for our mentors or any uh, topics you'd like to discuss. We have um, uh, two of our mentors here with us tonight. So, uh, Co. Oh. On the inside, uh, um, Dolores, you were talking about a lullaby, and I came in a little bit after you had started on that. Um, and then we're talking about giveaway. Are there giveaway songs that we should know? No um, question. Okay. Uh, Melody asked uh, me about a, a lullaby that my mother sang for little, boy, for little boys, <clears throat> and and she said, uh, she, "What part did she say?" I thought the old bed on hail, old bed on hail, Well, she wanted to know if uh, I. So to speak, kind of asking my permission if her daughters could give away, sing that song, give away for their brother who was taken into the Kiowa Gord clan, I guess this coming July. So I'll explain that I didn't have, it isn't my song, it's an old lullaby that most people don't know, but you sing to little boys. And so I told her, you know, the, the, she said my father sang it in one of the tribal culture tapes, too. So I don't, I've never heard that tape. I've never heard him. I just heard my mother sing it. And so, and it's a lullaby, just like the others are. But like I say, it, it doesn't seem to, not, uh, not too many people have heard it. Older ones probably have. But anyway, that's what we were talking about then. You heard the thing about giveaway. So anyway, that was it. Am I right, Melody? Oh, uh who, -huh, Grandma? Uh -huh. Oh, I think you're going to share that, Melody, correct? Yeah, I, I wish I was in front of my computer. I could pull it up. <laughs> but um, no, no. I'm actually... Uh, I'm actually making it into a lesson plan for a toddler boy, for like a one to two year old little boy. And right. I have the two different versions and the recordings. Uh, so Grandma D actually sang it for us in one of our Sunday sessions a couple years ago. And she broke it down word by word. And then mm -hmm. um, and then I have the recording of her dad singing it. And then he, he has a story actually that he sings and he says that his grandpa sang it to him. And so it's a really cool little speech that he gives mm -hmm. about it. So, and I know grandma, you said you didn't hear that part. So I want to find that so that you can hear that recording. And I could uh, oh. email those. Um, I could probably get those to aunt Carolyn's email. So that way you can, she could play it for you. And then uh, I can email the, um, the links and the timestamps to those other recordings for, for oh. this group, for Judy and Kathy. Oh, good. But uh, but when uh, so I'm almost done with the lesson plan, and then uh, I can, 
you know, I'll, I'll be able to preview it to get your feedback and oh. see what everyone thinks about it. <laughs> Sing her a lullaby. <laughs> and that one, Grandma. Does anyone have any other questions? <clears throat> I I have a question. Hande and Saita, this is Ki Ate Alisan. Um, so <clears throat> I don't know how sensitive this subject is, but um my my husband is um Oto Sakin Fox, Iowa, Shawnee, and Seneca. And um, whenever we have to go to a funeral, he always asks me, um, you know, well, what do Kaiwas do? And um, I was just wondering, um, is there any um, recordings or teachings about, you know, going to funerals or anything from a long time ago? Um, I know that's kind of a morbid thing to ask, but I always feel... I don't know. I, I don't have an answer for him. So I was just wondering, as did we have certain things that we did long time ago um, mm -hmm. when somebody passed away or anything like that? Or is, and is that even a subject that I can even ask? Maybe I should ask on a different platform. <clears throat> oh, Alison, I've always wanted to hear the recording that the Kawa Culture Tape did, and they, their topic was burial rites. And I saw it on a, at one time, and then I, someone, I don't know what happened to it or what, but I've never, we, I have not ever heard of that program. But it has a number, whoever has the uh, list of the, uh, uh, topics that they discussed, the Kyle culture uh, people did have it. It was listed in their, one of their uh, pro, uh, subjects that they talked about. And I was all, I'm like you, I wanted to know what they did a long time ago. And I know what we do now, but what they did a long time ago, I don't know. And that's why I was always interested in hearing that and listening. But so far, I've never heard it. I think maybe it's missing or what, but anyway. The melody, you do you remember scrolling through and finding it in there? Because I think I, it was listed, and then I don't know, we never played it. Um. Dolores, on the of course, uh, I've never heard the tapes that you're talking about, but it would be interesting because what I was told by the elders, of course, it just it goes back again to the same what we well, I'll say what we I mean what I was told about from them. <clears throat> You know that some they did the self uh, mutilation, or they cut off the little finger. Or this was like a family type of you know mourning and 
what they did during the after someone passed in their family or their relatives did. You know, the women cut their hair short and um, even some of the men because there's even a story about <clears throat> when the Chief Lone Wolf, his son, passed away and they went to recover his body. They were afraid that he might he might even kill himself because they were he was in such a, in such mourning. But they did self mutilation too. But those are just very brief descriptions. And so what we're talking about is today. And today, or what the question is from a young person who wants to know about today's um, <clears throat> funerals. And so that's totally changed because of Christianity. And just as we're losing our language, We've lost a lot of the traditional <clears throat> methods and ways that were once practiced. And so people don't do those things anymore, except <clears throat> there are some close relatives, <clears throat> excuse me, who cut their hair and um, a sign of respect. But that's about the closest thing you can come to practicing that and uh, having showing your <clears throat> respect and warning for someone that's close in the family like a mother, father, <clears throat> brother, sister, whatever and so Christianity has taken over many of the practices and so today people don't do those things anymore and that's why we're losing so much of our traditional even stories about happenings or practices and whatever that was um, done by our great grandparents and some grandparents Because we're really not that far away from, <clears throat> when you think about it, from that transition. Because what was happening, they, they were doing those types of practices even in the early 1900s. And it seems like a short time ago, because time is passing so quickly. But yet, the lives of our people have changed so quickly with this transition with so many modern things and our people are turning into white people and doing all the things that they do. Because that's what the dominant society wanted. They wanted to take everything away. And that's what has been that's what's been done. And then now you have people trying to come back, especially the non Indians and wanting to delve into our ways from the past or whatever. But we still have some information. And we're fortunate that we still have some people who know about some of the past history. And then Dolores, she has quite a bit of information, regardless of whether people think so or It's just that people of her age, of course, have gone through, but they've seen a lot, a lot more than, than even I have because I had to li I listened to my aunt and spoke to the elders because that's what I wanted to do. 
And so when you come to this psalm, uh, talking about funerals and mourning and all these others, it's just part of um, the Christian way now. But so I guess I'm to make a story, make the long story short, there's not not too much that can be contributed at this time except to know a little bit about the history that could be passed on. And the other part was um, even in the past, it depends. There was um, like the belongings, and there's another long little details about that. But uh, I will say that I remember my colleague had two fingers on, I don't know which hand were cut off when she lost her, she had two children that was back. And my experience as part of our tradition is uh, that we did, <clears throat> uh, it isn't something that was at the grave or anything like that. It's about <clears throat> when someone lost a loved one, uh, the family and friends went and stayed with them, and they never left them. I mean, I'm not talking like two days or three days. I'm talking about for weeks and weeks. And that's my experience, my personal experience. When my, uh, my oldest brother passed away, <clears throat> my uh, uncle uh, came. He lived at Mountain View. And we had a, a garage in the back, and we had an arbor, uh, an arbor that was a frame arbor with a screened-in part, part, the dining part and the kitchen part. We lived outside, and this was in the summer, early summer. And they, and my uncle and his family came. He had three children, his wife, and they came and they except this garage and they lived there all summer and with us he didn't want to leave his brother and so he would go take care of things at home but he would make sure that his family was there and they were there and so and he helped my dad um, he did took over my brother and his son and other my brother and our cousin help with the farm and then my brother's friend came his father told me come and go stay with your friend and so my father's my brother's friend came and then my grandma Alma would come she stayed and then my sister uh who's my cousin my mother's niece and she was a mother of all the Kozads, that grandmother of all the Kozads that you know. She had two daughters, small daughters, and they came and they stayed. And our arbor was large. It was a big space and there was a place on one whole side with, uh, well, Totena. You know what that is, that's a platform, you know. With, and so they stayed, we all stayed out there and there was a kitchen outside with a brick floor and a dining room, so there was plenty of rooms there. And and uh, so he came until they stayed all summer and helped with the harvest and the we had watermelons, cattle, and corn and whatever, and they helped with all of that. And they stayed there, and then the church would come periodically, and people would come. And at night, they would have prayer meetings and uh, just fellowship. And, and they, that's a Kiowa tradition that you do not leave your people, your family in mourning. 
And so uh, just like my brother's friend came and stayed, and they they slept outside on the porch, and and uh, so that's something that Kiowa that I have seen. It's my experience, and from time to time, um, uh, my other uncle would come with his family, and then my uh, my uh, aunt uh, who kept my grandparents. She would bring them over every now and then, but she didn't stay any length of time like the others did because she had them to take care of. And so they were just there. It was just, uh, everyone was there. No one left us until the fall when everyone had to go to school. And then everyone went their way, everyone, the young people that had to go to school. And so that is my experience as a Kiowa. That's the way that you do. And, and it, is, it isn't just our fun. I'm telling you my side, my story. And it happened all over Kiowa country. And so some people, some of your families, will, if they're old enough, if they're 94, maybe they can remember or less, they could remember. It just depends on your family, how how long they kept their that tradition up. And so that's what they did. And then uh, uh, that goes along with the way. So we're talking about the Christianity part, uh, the way back in when I was a little girl, they had wakes, all night wakes, and people were there to comfort the family. That was the whole idea. This was to comfort them and stay there. And and so I can look back and see when they were lived in teepees and they lived in bands and they were there together for the, the, those times, the period of mourning, they were all there. And so that was probably a carryover from whenever they all were together, camp nearby and and live in this group. And then they no longer were able to do that. They all had their allotments and private places to live. And, and so that was just something they, they hung on to and that they could do. Uh, and so that's what they did. That uh, To me, that's the way they lived when they, before they were confined to a reservation. And so, uh, I look back and and think about my cousins and my grandma Alma being there, and did they just stayed with us and they ate? And my aunt cooked, and like I say, there was a kitchen in the back and the outside, <clears throat> and my father built that part because my mother canned. And the house was small, and it would get warm in the winter when she can, in the summer when she can. So he built that so that we, she cooked for us out where when she wasn't canning. So she was out there in the arbor, and that's where we ate in the summer. And so uh, that's something that I treasure to see as a Kiowa. That's my experience, to see how our people took care of one another. And so in the Kiowa culture tapes, they mention over and over again, they're, they're, that was, they were in their 70s, in the late 70s, and they, they uh, talk about how people were and they were no longer, were no longer those, those Kai was that that they knew and talked about. And so there there are reasons for it, but then there are reasons for it not not to be the, the to sever our ties from our, our customs and traditions to the point that maybe we had. Maybe we could. So that's why I'm thankful for all of you who have strived to learn Kiowa and 
you uh, as you won't be able to have the memories and <clears throat> and that those uh, the mem all the mentors have of the elders. But I appreciate your your uh, all the time that you take, the effort you put into <laughs> learning our language, because that's how I recall things and the way they they spoke and the way they they talk. And so, uh, and then like Marion said, then time when the missionaries came, and then. Then I guess in the eighteen nineties, uh, then there it was a Christian burial with the all night wake, and now that's no longer. And so we've come uh, a long ways from that. But I, like I said, I'm I'll be forever grateful. I'm grateful to see that the how how. Uh, your family and your kids, your your relatives mean a lot, and I always say that because you know from your study of Kiowa how detailed and how I guess how uh, what am I trying to say our kinship, all the terms and everything they're they're confusing, and but that's part of us. And it's good. It's good that you that you're learning and you make mistakes. But the whole point is that's Kiowa. That's our way. That's our language. And that's that's what we have. And that's who we are. <clears throat> Omaha. Oh. Oh. As you reminded me, uh, it brought back those memories because, you know, I saw some of the, what you're talking about, the closeness and everybody there. Everybody, it was such, um, there were always people at our grandma and grandpa's house and coming by. And when my uh, grandmother passed away, it was really, that was really a heart-rending time for everybody. But they went through that. And I, it was just something that I was right there in the middle of that. Sometimes, <clears throat> my uh, memories just stuck with me for years and years because of what I've seen, what I've witnessed. And there were so many relatives and closeness and people there constantly. That's kind of tough to talk about. So I'll just stop. Thank you, uh, Grandma Marion and Grandma D for sharing that. Um, that's what happened with uh, when my dad passed away in 2011. My grandma, Vicki um, Kale, came to stay with my mom. And then my sister-in-law, Kim Tiger, and Cameron um, came to live with us for three months. They didn't leave us. We didn't go to bed without you know, with the empty house. And I guess we were practicing our Kiowa ways, but we didn't know it. Um, maybe Grandma Vicky knew it, um, but she said she was gonna be with us as long as we needed her. And she moved in with us and we had her for three or four months. And then eventually she moved back home, but um, it helped a lot through our mourning process and missing my dad and, um, so um, I'll never forget that. It um, helped, helped us um, 
you know, maybe not heal because um, it's, we still miss him, but it helped us um, get through every day, day to day. So, aho, thank you. Uh, oh, that was really helpful. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions? I don't have any questions, but I was uh, thinking about what Dolores said, you know, about being together. Um, things have changed so much in the world now, you know, with churches, they sometimes they'll turn you down when you want to have an uh, all night wake service. My family, they've been through a hard time this last year. We've lost five family members. And out of those five, three of them, we got to take them home and have that all night wake, you know. I was taught when I was young that when you lose somebody, you don't leave them, don't leave them. And I try to pass that on to my kids and, you know, all of them in the family. And because that's the way we were taught, you know, um, just like they said, family came, they would stay as long as they could. You know, it, it's just, it just gives you a real warm, heartfelt feeling to have all your family around you like that when you lose someone because you have family members that you don't get to see all the time. But I know the all night wait because of the churches nowadays, you know, they, they don't agree to that. Um, but when I grew up, that's how we grew up. When we lost someone, they always brought them home to the house. And today, you know, we were, <clears throat> we were fortunate enough to be able to take three of my loved ones home to patch by and, that's what they, that's where they wanted to be. So yeah, I understand that and and thank you for sharing. I hope. That was just my experience, personal experience, but I don't know what they did. Um, I was, I was, I'm still, uh, I would still like to hear that original, if it can be found or what, what happened to it, or maybe it has, it's under another uh, title, I don't know. But it says burial rights on there somewhere. Oh, um, this is Melody. So we're um, we're gonna have our Sunday session this Sunday, this coming Sunday, because the next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and uh, we could we could look for that recording and play that tape on Sunday if 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 you're available, Allison. I would I would really that would I would really love to hear that. Um. 
um, because um, I don't know, I just find it um, interesting. And I um, agree that, you know, I, I do feel some way, you know, when we, when we're in that funeral process and not leaving them and something, I, I feel like, you know, you need to stay until you put them away, you know? So I'd really like to find out, you know, listen to those tapes. That would be, that would be wonderful. I know. I think we tend to uh, do like some other tribes do. And we, do things I'm not going to mention the things that, that I see that are not Kiowa I'll just leave it at that I will be available on Sunday if you want to play it on Sunday that would be great Melody <clears throat> Awesome. Oh, I'll look for it. I'll have it ready and we'll start at three o'clock on Sunday then. Oh, I have. All right. Well, that sounds like a plan for Sunday. I'll see what I can find. Um, let's see. We're almost at 8.30. Are there any other questions or comments from anyone before we wrap up? All right, I'm not hearing any. I don't see anything in the chat. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and uh, close out for the evening. Um, so, let's see. To close us out. A holy and armor. A very arc of day. And psalmic and dark and dark with Pedro. Hate to get cartons on the go, hate to get card poem. A tiber and Tom Pedro. An old town doggy and sort the Kiago a dog. Tendo. Cocker, Hard to get all my doggy a whole day but ha and get dots I don't get all my and saw me get build up my algae go haba and hi hi go take doggy and a doggy they pay though and told you doggy. Um, the third old doggy, 
I'm the Anto Tama, the Oki get Tama, the Aido. Hanago Dama get they they uh eagle dog or dog get up get dog they hold dog get more they pondered in they but dog or they felt I the dog or own tanta own tuck they eat a tanta I can't pay the little tata over her. All right. Well, we appreciate everyone joining us tonight and awesome discussion. Appreciate everyone's questions and we'll uh, pick up again next Wednesday for our session to continue practicing and preparing for credentialing and then on Sunday we'll listen to our uh, Kiowa culture program tape um, so with that hopefully we'll see most of you uh, next week and if not see you on Sunday so oh oh Oh. It was good to see you. I mean, uh, hey, God, boy. Hey, God, boy. Hey, God, boy. Hey,